Hi, my name is Brian Caffo, and this is the lecture on Shiny in the Data Products class. This class is co-taught with my collaborators Jeff Leak and Roger Peng. We're all in the Department of Biostatistics at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Okay, so what is Shiny? Shiny is a platform for creating interactive R programs in a web page. Let's give an example. So your boss comes in and you've created a prediction algorithm and they want you to put it up in a format so that lots of users can access it and they don't all have to come to you to get their predictions. They want to be able to point and click them. But you want to be able to do it quickly. You know, you don't want to, to involve web, you know, legitimate web development and these other things. So anyway, using Shiny, the, the time to create simple yet powerful web-based interactive data products in R is, is minimized. You know, it, it lacks the flexibility of full featured and complex solutions where you create a, a you know, a full web interface on, you know, from scratch and, and call servers that you've designed. But, but on the other hand, the, the development cost is, is so small using a tool like Shiny. And anyway, Shiny is made by the, the fine folks at, at, at our studio, which is a, a, a you know, product that we really support and highlight in this series. So some, some mild prerequisites, and since I am not a web developer, maybe I'm not the best person to be teaching this class. I don't even play a web developer on TV, but let me give you my understanding of the prerequisites. So some mild prerequisites. So Shiny doesn't really require it, but with all web pro programming, you know, you need to know a little bit of HTML. At the bare minimum, you have to know some HTML. And some, you know, a little bit of CSS and JavaScript is certainly going to be helpful to be effective with Shiny. Just a little bit, not much. So if you haven't seen these things before, you know, HTML gives the web page structure and sec sectioning as well as markup instruction. CSS is, a, is the style. And then JavaScript is, is basically most web pages that have interactivity. It's JavaScript that's giving you the interactivity. So certainly you wouldn't come to us as PhD statisticians to learn about web development. And there's so many tutorials online that you can get them from so many places. I would hesitate to even recommend one. The shiny, the style it uses is the so-called bootstrap style, which has no relation to the statistics bootstrap, which as far as I'm concerned looks nice. And more importantly, I think it, it you know, whenever you develop a little shiny app, to me it always seems to render nicely on mobile platforms kind of automatically, which is the benefit of using this sort of highly polished style guide and um, platform with Bootstrap. So look it up. It's, I, I, I believe it's made by the folks at Twitter. So what else is out there? There's another product that I, that I, I, you know, I, I feel like we, we have to mention. If you really want a great solution and you know a lot of web programming, kind of client-server programming, then you can do your own solution in a variety of ways and, you know, with some CGI script type thing. But you know, that's way too in-depth for this class, focused on people who know R and know some statistics and want to deploy what they're developing quickly. There's this, also this great project by, uh, called OpenCPU by a person named Jerome Ooms, it, which is it's a great product. It's, it's, I think, probably more flexible than Shiny, but again, it, it requires, requires a much more kind of knowledge of web programming to, to really be able to implement not much but but more I think it, but it's a, it's a more flexible platform for doing these sorts of things. He even hosts an open CPU survey or server but then he also shows you how you can create your own. So let's give the context. You created a novel prediction algorithm to predict risk for diabetes and you're hoping patients and caregivers will be able to enter their data and if needed take preventative measures. And you want to create a website so that users can input, input the relevant predictors and obtain their prediction. Your prediction algorithm, okay, so you know you're not you're not going to win a Nobel Prize for this one. Is you take their glucose level and divide it by 200. And since this is an obviously serious topic, there here's a, a link for a pretty simple but real prediction score for diabetes. But you know again, I would emphasize about prediction scores. It depends on who the 
the, the p- proposed clientele is. The clientele that have been referred to a clinical to a clinic are going to be different and entering in different values than if you're asking everyone who has the, the slightest potential idea that they might have diabetes without having seen a caregiver. Th- these two groups would be very different. So anyway, I, I just want to point out that there's you know a lot of intricacy in creating prediction algorithms. So let's go through it. You know, make sure you have a good, nice, late release of R installed. If you're on Windows, you got to have R tools installed. You can grab Shiny from CRAN with installed up packages. You got to say library Shiny, which I won't repeat from now on. There's, you know, mostly what I'm going to do in this is go through the tutorial at at R Studio, but hopefully in a in a little bit more didactic and simple way. So basically, we're just going to go through the their tutorial. I also, I'm a huge fan of RStudio's manipulate function, huge fan of it. So often if you want to do something in Shiny, but you, you just want to do it for yourself or you're going to do it for someone else who uses RStudio, manipulate is this awesome, simple little function. It handles so many like little, tiny, nice, special cases, and it really, I really like it. R charts will be covered in a different lecture for interactive graphics that use some modern JavaScript libraries. So how do you create a Shiny project? You need two parts. One is you need a file named ui.r, and they have to be in the same directory. One you need a file named ui.r, and one you need a file named server.r. So you need those two files, and if you have those two files. So here's the here's the minimal, here's a minimal ui.r function. You're going to say library shiny just to make sure that shiny is loaded. You have this shiny UI function and you say page with sidebar, which gives you the page format. And I'll, we'll see in a minute. I'm going to give a header that says data science for the win and a sidebar panel that where I label it with sidebar text so we know where it's at. And then in the main panel, I'm going to put main panel.txt. Some important things to to note that the H3 here is just the third level heading, third level HTML heading. So I'm just saying I want this, you know, basically what Shiny is going to do is it's going to translate this into the third level HTML heading on the fly for you. So it's going to be that size. So, and it's, you know, hopefully the notation is clear. H1 will give you H1 heading, H2 will give you H2 heading, P will give you that guy, and so on. And then my server.r, uh, it's going to do nothing. But I just need this function, shiny server. It takes input and output and returns, in this case, null. OK? To run it, you change into the directories with these files and type run app, or you can, or you can put the path as an argument. And it should open a browser window with the app running. So here's kind of what it would look like. It, it's chopping off, it's chopping off part of the main panel, just to make it fit on the on the page for me here when I cropped it as an image. But here's you know it renders the text. Hello, shiny. Here's sidebar. 